Alright guys, finally, it's Midwest Kim back at it again, and we are starting the Rhymer Timen reaction, and uh, this is my table, I've been using at the, you know, makeshift lab, and uh, I've been moving, uh, things have been a little chaotic, but I'm back, here we go, as we can tell already, it's yellow. So I might as well just shut it down and give up and just fucking roll over. So yellow, dead. Okay, cool. So anyways, what we got here, oh, thank God, is phenyl and a solution of potassium hydroxide. Now, what I used was 28.4 grams of phenyl. That's everything that I had. And I put about 70 grams of potassium hydroxide. This is an excess. So this should help when the phenylate ion is um, is used up and the dichlorocarbene starts to form, that the reaction won't slow down just because there's less potassium hydroxide to create more dichlorocarbene. So let's go ahead and see what we can get into. All right, so here we go. Here's the next part of the setup. And... Uh, what we have here in the bottom is the phenyl potassium hydroxide uh, mixture. It's stirring vigorously. As you can tell, it's bumping around my thermometer. So I'm actually waiting for this thing to hit 60 C. We're sitting at about 50. Come on. We're sitting at about 50 right now. I don't even know if you can see that. Probably not. Yes, there we go. 50 C. And sorry, I got a stand for my camera, and I've misplaced it during my move, so enjoy my cocky, shaky hands. Anyways, we got the yes. Going up to our condenser. And then we got our chloroform there. Now, a lot of people had said this reaction is prone to thermal runaway. I figured the solution to that is going to be a slow dropwise addition. And then we're going to reflux for about two hours. So uh, let's go ahead and get this started here as soon as it hits 60, and we'll see what goes on. There we go. Okay, let's go inside. Okay, now this is a little bit on Okay, and just a quick note, although we are getting a little more of an orange color and it's it's appearing red on, on camera, I'm at 75 degrees and climbing after just that short addition. Man, that is highly exothermic. So when they say prone to thermal runaway, um, I can definitely understand why. We're already getting a lot of reflux. Obviously, it's at the boiling point of chloroform, but we're climbing. So, let's see what we can do with this. Would you just look at it? Now that's vigorous. It can get crazy really quick. So when you uh, don't replicate this uh, reaction, use caution. I've got actually a pretty rapid drip rate, if you can see that. Now we are starting to look red. And I'm gonna go ahead and kill the addition for a second. We are getting a lot of heat produced. All right, so just a couple notes to make. Maybe about half to three quarters of the way through, I should have turned the heat back on. The reaction itself uh, sustained the heat on its own. Um, but once I got toward the end, I think things died down a bit. And uh, now I'm having a trouble with uh, massive amounts of foaming. I mean, absolutely massive. Uh, thankfully, it didn't go too high, but I had it all the way up to here earlier. Some of it washed back down. I 
So, um, just a word of caution um, that this is not only exothermic at first, but the heat does die. Um, I don't know if that signifies the end of all the fennel being used. Not really sure, but I guess we'll find out. Also, another thing I have probably discovered is going to be salt precipitation. The excess of hydroxide that I used um, gave excess potassium ions to the solution, and through the common ion effect, we have a bunch of potassium chloride, I believe. I'm almost positive that's what that is, but kind of look, I don't know if you can see. There's a lot of foam. And right there you can kind of see where the level of foam is. It's absolutely ridiculous how much this foams. So, and that's all that's left, and I'm having trouble even getting that in. So we will see. So about two and a third hours after the addition began, the foaming has subsided. There is a small amount. Eh, what do you consider bubbles, you know? Um, I'm assuming this is probably because most of the chloroform has been consumed. Um, not 100% sure. Alright, here's the uh, aftermath. Um, so the smell of fennel and chloroform is, is basically gone. Um... Uh, a bunch of potassium chloride down at the bottom, so that would let me know things went fairly well, I hope, but I don't know. I'm packing up here, like I said, we'll come back with the uh, purification step. Alright, here we are, a week later, but uh, what I've done here is I've taken the reaction mixture and I have added it uh, to a beaker, and I've added about 300 mils of water to it. Uh, basically the goal here is to get everything down there dissolved, and I think that should be more than plenty. But uh, we're going to go ahead and dissolve this up, and then I'm going to get it in a uh, separatory funnel, and then we're going to go from there. Interesting enough, as you can see, there appears to be a precipitate forming. I can't really tell if it's like an oily precipitate. I'm not sure. Anyways, we're adjusting the pH till acidic. We don't want to get it too acidic. There's a lot of potassium chloride in solution, and that'll start putting off hydrogen chloride gas. So we just want to make sure everything's neutralized and maybe a bit acidic. I'm going to say that's an oil-based precipitate. Not 100% sure some of that shit in there might be fennel. Or maybe just organic byproducts. Not 100% sure. Alright, so... It is a bit hard to see. The one day I have free, it's got to be cloudy, rainy, and, and dark. So, anywho, um, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's gotten quite clear in comparison. You can kind of see an area through there through all the crap. It's clear. There's just this obnoxious precipitate. It's brown. No idea. I'm going to say byproduct or intermediate, I don't know, but this is also why we're extracting with DCM. Hopefully that'll uh, dissolve into the DCM, and when we do the bisulfite adduct, it'll separate.
post distillation. Crude, still hot. We collected DCM. Here we go, salicyl aldehyde bisulfite adduct. Now I weighed this and we've got about oh, 30 grams. I think it was 33.03. Now, I did not realize I had weighed my stir bar also. So I reweighed the stir bar, it was about six grams. So we're looking at about 27 grams of a bisulfite adduct between two runs. Um, now, I don't think 27 grams is right. It's still very wet. It still smells sulfur dioxide-like. Um, so I, I don't exactly trust that number. There's probably a couple of grams of water left in here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, probably go ahead and cut it here. Um, no, you know what, screw it. We're gonna go all the way to the end. So we'll show next how to um, get the salus allowed to hide back. So I've actually got two things working today. I am dissolving a little more cadmium. I didn't have enough from the first go around. Um, as well as I am hydrolyzing the salicyl aldehyde bisulfite adduct. So this is about 20% H2SO4 right behind it. We're gonna go ahead and start to scoop it in. I'll be right back. All right, just above that white layer there is my oil layer. I am taking a secondary uh, bit of water and I, I washed the original flask out with a new glove on. And uh, it kind of made a little white cloudy layer at the top there. Okay. swirl and as you may be able to see uh, my stir bar got screwed in there So here we go. There's a tip bit off white. Saturated salt solution, trying to help dry a little bit. Mm. 
not, yeah, definitely a little off-colored oil there. That's okay, though. It's not too bad. Sorry about the glare. I finally got something to try to help my uh, my videos be a little better, but the light is very glaring off of the glass. So I'll have to figure that out, but a little bit of time. We'll get it. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's why I'm Midwest, Midwest Kim. Start off Midwest Amateur, but uh, uh, I say that because I'm just flipping amateur. Come on. Down quite a bit, stupid stir bar. Wow. A little decent, decent little bit of oil there. Oh, hi. Uh, how you doing? Uh, face reveal, I guess. <laughs> Salt solution. No. think there'll be any pressure really building up, but have it. Sorry, slowly but surely I'm going to figure this out. I've just been so damn busy that it's kind of hard right now. Alright, we're going to let that separate. I'll come back. Noob mistake. I actually just remember hearing about that on uh, That Chemist the other day. go. Alright, there's that. Didn't really drain it too well.
the yield. Sound is still out to hide. I'm going to throw some molecular sieves in there and try it. Alright guys, this is it right here, salicylaldehyde. Uh, I threw it in the freezer, um, froze solid, great sign. Uh, basically, I will weigh it on the next video when I go to do the reaction. But uh, this is going to be a very sad uh, yield. I definitely am sad, but it worked. It just can't be that sad. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. This has been the Rhymal Timer Reaction. Uh, I'll catch you on the Coomerin video, which I promise you is going to be a lot better than my videos this time. I have already prepared for this, and uh, will be a little better. I had a lot of problems with this video, so it just, I feel like it's a little rushed, but um, I am preparing thoroughly for this next one. But uh, this is this is a great reaction. You can use it for a lot of different things, uh, fennels, and great, awesome reaction. Um, would definitely recommend it. The dichlorocarbene was really the catch for me in this was different. Um, I could have used formaldehyde, and that would have made two hydroxy benzyl alcohol, which I could have oxidized. Uh, probably my normal route, which is uh, DCM. Uh, with manganese dioxide and uh, we'll oxidize the alcohol to aldehyde. Alright, anyways guys, thanks Midwest Kim. Have a good day.